Okay, now that you've made the interface for your image gallery app, we're going to look how we can build the blocks. The first job is to press the blocks editor button to open it up. Once it's opened, which may take a minute, you'll then see this screen. And we're now ready to start to build the blocks to control our app. The first thing is, in my blocks, you can see all the components that I've added. The first one is my button to go next. My second object is my button to go previously. I have the canvas, and the canvas is going to be used to place the image onto. I also have my two horizontal arrangements. That is for the image, and this one are for my two buttons. And I also have the screen one, which is the first screen I'm on. Okay, the first thing that we're going to go do though is go to my definitions. Now, you've not used my definitions before, and the idea behind my definitions are to create uh, objects that can do very specific things. Um, and at the moment, we don't have any definitions. What we're looking to do in my definitions is create a place that can remember two things. The first thing is we're going to create a list. So what we're going to do is we're going to say in the built-in area, I want to create a definition, and the definition that I want to create is going to be a variable. So I'm going to drag this on. Now, we know about variables because we've used variables before, but a variable is a place where you can say something temporarily during your program, but we give the variable name. So I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call it, okay, first one, image underscore list. And the image underscore list variable is going to store a list of all the images that are saved to your gallery. Now, we know that we need to make a list, so we're going to go to built in again, and list, and we're going to make a list. And when you connect it to the end, you're now going to say, I've now got a list, and the list is called image list. Now, when you've made this list, we're going to actually attach all the images that we've uploaded to the media section of our app inside of this. So the first thing you must do is just left click in the block to the right hand side of item, choose text or text again, and then connect it. Now this is the really clever bit of App Inventor and making this app. Because you've already, I'm just going to go back, uploaded your images to the media, the first one is called Christmas underscore Pels dot PNG. So what we're going to do is go back to the blocks editor and change the text to be Christmas underscore Pels dot PNG. Two important things to note, capital letters and spelling. Because I've called it Christmas underscore bells dot PNG inside of my interface builder, what I've now told the list is that I've added an image to my interface in the media section and this is the first image. So that now means I've got an image within this list and this image should be able to be applied to my canvas later on. So it's literally like seeing uh, all of your image is inside of a folder in a list format rather than seeing the pictures. So what I now must do is I now must go and add the second image. So I'm just going to click next to it left and press text and text again and connect it. And I'm going to go back to my interface and it's called Christmas underscore candy dot PNG. So in my interface I'm going to call it Christmas Make sure it's a capital C first. Underscore sand candor dot PMG. And press enter. Um, so I've now got my two images Christmas underscore bells dot uh, PNG and Christmas underscore candor. You can also, and a little cheat, is if you're on your keyboard anywhere you are, just type text, you'll get this list. And these are all of the different operations or blocks you can use. So if I want to use a text block, I can do text, press enter, and it will automatically generate a text block. It's a bit clicker. I can then drag it that way and do the same again. So what I'd expect you to now go and do is go and add the rest of the images to the list in the same way. And then you should have a list of all your images. And we'll do mine really quickly. What you'll now see is the fact that I've got a range of images attached. And the important thing to remember is they are the file name of the images that we have saved in our interface builder. So that may take you a few minutes to do, and it's a little bit fiddler, but it's important that you do the right file names with the underscores and the dot format. So dot PNG is a format, dot JPEG is a format. Okay, if you make a spell mistake, it won't work later on. So now I've got my images attached. I've now said that I have a list of images, and that list is now called image underscore list. So that is the name of that variable. So I'm just going to move that to one side. What I'm now going to do is create another variable. So inside a built-in, in definitions, I'm going to create a second variable. And this variable is going to be called image underscore index. And that image underscore index is the position okay, of the image within the list. 
I'm going to set that to be number one. So I'm just going to type number one, press enter, and it will automatically snap a number one. And what that means is, when I load the app, it's automatically going to go to the Christmas bells uh, image on the list because that's the first item. That's the index. Index one means the, the position. Uh, Christmas candy, that's index number two, item number two. Santa's item number three. Snowman is four. Christmas fault is five. Present is six. Christmas tree is seven. Holly is eight. And star is nine. So literally, we're going to start every single time from Christmas bells when it loads. But we're also going to use this later on to be able to move up and down our list to go to the next image or the previous one. So once we've done that, our next job is to start doing the really clever bit. To do this, we're going to go to My Blocks, and in My Blocks we have got the Next button. And when we click the button underscore Next, we want a few things to happen. Now this is where you're going to use your previous program experience. If statements. If something is true, do something about it. Else, if it's not true, do something different. So what we're going to say is, inside of built-in, we're going to go to control and we have lots of different things. We're going to choose an if else control block. And that block is going to say if something is true and we're going to say the test. The test is what we're going to look for. So what I'm going to say is we're going to see if, I'm going to do equals, we're going to say if the image index is at the end. If it's at the end, then what we want to say is, you can't go to any more images, we've stopped. So we want to say, if we're at the end, so we've got to say, if the value of image index is 9. So to do that, we have to go to my blocks and my definitions, and we're going to look at the global uh, variable. And the global variable we're going to look to is going to be image index. We're going to say, if we've got to the end, and the end is position 9, so we're going to just type 9 and press OK. So we're going to say, if... The test is we're at the end of our image list. So image list, that's number nine. We're going to say show the image, but then we want it to go back to the beginning. So we're going to say, first of all, before we go back to the beginning, we want to go to the canvas and we want to set the background of the canvas. So it's all the way through the bottom. And you've got canvas one, that background image two. That means change the background image two. And what we want to change it to is an item from our list. So you want to go to built in and list and we want to say select from a list and when we're going to say select from a list we're now going to have to call the name of our list so our list is called image underscore list which is really easy to find because in my blocks in my definitions you have the global variable called image underscore list so what we're going to say is when we press the next button if we're at the end before we reset we're going to change the background and we're going to go to this list and what we're going to go to in this list is a certain position. The position that we're going to go to is the position that this says. So we're going to keep a count. So what we're going to say is we want to go to whatever position that stores or whatever number that is up to. And the idea is it should be 9. But we're not going to say 9. We're going to say image um, underscore index. The value of whatever that variable is. So image underscore index. So what that means is we're going to test to make sure we're not at the end. If we are at the end, before we finish, we're just going to set the background to be the last picture. And we're going to do that by saying, first of all, go to this list. And second of all, choose whatever list item we're up to, which is the last one. Once we've done that, we're then going to change. We're going to reset okay, the image index. To reset it, we're going to say, under my blocks and my definitions, set global, which means set the image underscore list to, or set underscore um, the index. We're going to set the index and what we're going to do is we're going to set the position of the list or wherever up to and we want to change it to be the first one. So in other words we're going to say if we're at the bottom when you press next go back to the top. So you're going to be able to go to the bottom and if you're at the bottom we're going to say go back to the top. So what it will say is if you're number nine put the image there first but if you are number nine go back to the top. So go back to the Christmas bells. If you're not number nine we're going to say Go to next image, go to next image, go to next image, go to the next image, go to the next image. So we're now going to say, if we have got to the last one, we want it to change to the star image, and then, next time you press next, take us to the top. So if we're not at next, we've got to say, if we're not at the bottom, if we're not at star, we need it to say, change the background, but actually, just increase it to be one. So it's the same type of thing, to be fair. We're going to just get this block, and I'm actually just going to click on it, 
and do control and C. I never do control and C, so I'll say control and C over there and then control and V, and that'll paste it. I'm going to copy it the exact same block. So what I'm going to say is, else, if I'm not at the last thing, change the background of the image, but what I want to do is set the global um, variable of image index. I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to put that at the bottom. But rather than saying to number one, which is wrong, I'm going to say I want you to add. So I'm going to say add. And what I'm going to say is this. And it'll make sense when it's connected, to be fair. I'm going to go back to my definitions. And I'm going to say get global index. And this is what I'm saying. I am saying whatever current position I'm up to in the list, if I am not at the end, say add one to wherever I am. So in other words, if I'm at one, I'm not at the end, so I'm not in the nice position, so I'm going to change the background, I'm going to change the image that's being displayed, and I'm going to say, go to number two. Then if I uh, say it again, press next, it'll say, are you at the end? If you're not, display number eight, number two and go to number three. So show Christmas candy. Click it again, I'm at the end, nope, if I'm not, show Santa, and then go to number four. So it's the same technique all the way through. So you've now got a complicated section. Um, before I test it, I'm now going to say to you, if that makes sense to you and you're feeling really comfortable, what I need you to do is pause the video. And what then what you do is, can you figure out how to do the previous button? So when you press the, uh, the button underscore previous, go back. It's exactly the same technique with the same understanding, but it just requires a little bit more logic. So I'm going to go quiet for 10 seconds. And if you want to try it by yourself, pause me now, try it and then come back. If you're not too comfortable, just wait for 10 seconds and then carry on watching the video. Okay, if you are not comfortable doing this or you've tried it and it's not worked out, don't panic. What I'm now going to tell you to do is, your first job is to go to my blocks and in my blocks, we're going to start with button underscore previous. So now I'm going to say button underscore previous. I'm now going to show you uh, a little cheeky uh, manoeuvre. The first thing I'm going to say is, the if else block, I'm just going to click it, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And I've got a second copy. It's actually very similar to the next button, to do the previous button. So for those that were very brave and tried it, if it didn't work out, don't panic. It's just a little bit different. What we're going to say is, if, I'm just going to move this down a little bit so you can see it. If we are going to say, if we're at the end and we're going to the previous, we don't want him to go to position number one. We want him to go to position number nine. So you want to go nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So what we want to do is, we want to check, are we at the first image? So we're going to say, is the index of the list number one? Are we at the Christmas bells? If we are, what we then want to say is, first of all, dead straightforward, go back to position number nine. That means if we're at number one and we press previous, jump to the end, jump to the ninth item on the list. Okay? And that's it. We've won a very, very clever thing. If you're not at the end, you want to go to position eight to position 7, to position 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And if you're very smart, you would have noticed that we added 1 to the position when we were going forward next. That means when we're going back, we've got to change the symbol to be minus. That means when we press the previous button, if we're not at the end, we don't want to jump to number 9, we just want to go back by one position from where we currently are. That is a script that you need to use to make this app. So, go and try it. Don't forget to press save. I'll be back in about two seconds.